Hi guys, well today, as promised, um, I'm going to share with you what I've been eating since going wheat free. Um, when I had first done my first few videos, I had several of you asked um, if I could share what I've been eating. Um, just to keep in mind, now this has been several weeks ago now, I've kind of lost count how many weeks it's been. Um, it's probably going on at least four weeks maybe. Um, but I, what started this kind of out um, is before I even read the book, Wheat Belly. I'd always heard about that book, let me just say. Um, and you know, I just thought, you know, that's not for me. I think the, the cover of the book with all the bagels and stuff turned me off and I thought, well, I'm not one to just shove a bunch of bagels and all this stuff in my face, you know, and I don't overeat carbs and all that. Even though I do, I would say, I do eat a fair amount of carbs. You know, in my mind, I was always like, oh, they're healthy carbs, you know, and whole wheat bread, and it wasn't like junk, I felt like, you know, because any of you have been following me for any length of time, whether it's on my other channel, this channel, I eat pretty healthy. Sometimes on the weekends, we'll splurge, you know, I feel like everybody needs a splurge once in a while. Um, but overall, we don't eat a lot of junk. So just to kind of give you that backstory, if you're just tuning in for this video, we try to buy, um, you know, everything organic that we can as far as definitely meats. I hardly ever buy anything not organic or all natural without, you know, added hormones, antibiotics, all that stuff um, for meat and dairy as much as I can. Even though I personally can't eat a lot of dairy now, um, you know, as far as like cheese, all that. So anyway, just to give you that, we don't eat a lot of processed foods hardly at all. Um, if we do eat something, you know, of a box or a bag, I try to get something, you know, as natural as it can be. Um, but like I said, we're always going to have those splurges. I mean, for instance, if, again, if you watch me for a while, then you know my weakness is chips and especially Fritos. <laughs> so, you know, like I said, we all have our splurges. Um, but just like I said, to give you a little background, um, but I have been feeling better. I know my last up update, I was kind of like a little like, eh, you know. Um, but I'm still feeling good and I continue to feel good the longer it goes on. So I'm happy I've continued it. Um, just to update, I've had wheat twice now though. Not actual bread though. Um, but I've had pizza. <laughs> and it may have even been a few days after that last up update. It was a Friday night. And again, if you guys follow my what's for dinner or anything like that, my husband and I usually switch off between Mexican or pizza on Friday night. Um, but, you know... We didn't know what we wanted to eat, which is often the case on Friday. It seems like, you know, what kind of week we've had, what kind of day, what we're doing, you know, for the weekend. Um, and my husband really wanted pizza. So I even went as far to, you know, look online. We usually get Papa John's. Well, they didn't offer gluten-free. Um, we were going to get Domino's, but we don't really love Domino's as much. So we decided to skip it and just get regular Papa John's. And I was a little freaked out going into it. I'm not going to lie, wondering, okay, what's this going to do? But I had pizza that night, was fine. Um, you know, I made sure I didn't like scarf it down or anything, and I felt okay. I felt okay the next day. However, the next day, oddly enough, I had like turkey bacon, tomatoes, and some cheese for breakfast because they didn't know what I wanted. And I was sick later in the day. So the only thing I think of was maybe the cheese because I felt completely fine after the pizza. Um, and normally within two to three hours after I eat is when I would notice something. So anyway, I had pizza. Um, and then you'll see recently um, in a what's for dinner video, you'll probably see before this, I had an Amy's frozen pizza, which oddly enough, I don't know if I ever paid attention to that, that thing says it has 25 grams of protein per serving, which blew my mind for frozen pizza because it's only got like broccoli and tomatoes and some cheese and pesto, you know? So, but anyway, we ended up having that. Again, it was Friday night. We didn't know what we wanted and I was okay with that too. But it's one of those, that's been like one time in a span of days. Like I make sure if I'm gonna have something like that, then I won't eat wheat more that day or a couple days later. So just to let you know, but I'm still trying to really be wheat free and not eat any. But there are gonna be circumstances come up where, you know, I'm gonna have a little bit. So that's kind of the background, what's been going on. Um, I did lose a little bit more weight again. I'm about a half pound shy of losing total of five pounds, which is pretty good considering, um, again, if you followed me on my other channel, I'm not sure if I've ever mentioned it. Um, 
for like three years now, it's been impossible for me to even lose a pound. And through the more research I've done, um, and many of you know, I'm still trying to look for a doctor, but you know, in the meantime, I'm trying to do what I can to help myself heal myself for all these issues I'm having. Well, in all my research and with talking to other people, I'm pretty positive, and I thought this three years ago actually too, when I had my blood tested, but of course it came back normal. As many of us do, we have our blood work done even though we know something's probably off. I'm pretty positive I'm hypothyroid um, just because of a lot of the symptoms I have and I mean, it just, you would be amazed in all the research, you know, well, if you do any that I've done and people I've talked to, things I've read, when you just start digging deeper, a lot of the issues like digestive issues, allergies, things like that, that you just think are random little pieces here and there, they all come back together that it probably has to do with your thyroid, um, which was shocking to me. And it even touches on thyroid issues in that book, Wheat Belly. So. Um, some of you may be familiar with that, but I mean, I read any little piece of information I can get my hands on and kind of take from it what, you know, I want and what I need, I feel like. So anyway, um, as any of you know that are hypothyroid or heard about it or know someone with it, it's almost possible to lose weight. Like you can diet and exercise till you're blue in the face and you're not going to lose weight because your body's working against you. So a lot of things I had read basically said to start focusing on your diet because I'd wondered why are these digestive issues coming up out of the blue you know I'd never had problems with you know sensitivities to certain food food allergies I'd never had any of that so I thought let me start trying to clean up my diet and see what works I told you about a year ago I stopped drinking milk because I had read you know when you have allergies that can sometimes make it worse so I stopped um, drinking that and then I've slowly cut down on some dairy that I noticed bothers me um, so for instance eggs, I can, cannot eat eggs, usually cheese, things like that don't usually bother me but I'm very selective in the dairy that I eat just to be sure. Um, and I have never thought I had a problem with wheat but I was eating a lot of it I have to say and a lot of times if you guys followed me on you know day in the life what would I eat for breakfast? Greek yogurt, that's something I rarely eat anymore once in a while. What would I have? Greek yogurt and a slice of you know organic whole wheat toast together. So those were like two major factors you know, for me that were making me bloated, uncomfortable, all that. So that's why the more I researched, um, again, this is just some backstory so you know, the more I researched, the more it was like, okay, let me try to give up the wheat, give up some dairy, see if that helps me feel good and just see what I can do until I can find a doctor um, and get some more tests run to help me feel better, you know, get going back on the right track. So it has made me feel much better. I know some of you are also doing wheat free and or dairy free. You said you've been feeling better, so that is great. That just shows your body's, you know, imbalanced and you need to get it back on track. So um, I've definitely felt good. Um, it's not even worth it to me anymore. Like if I eat something and then I feel bloated, it's one of those you like seeing the good results, so naturally you're going to continue on the path of getting those good results. So that's what's made it easier as I go on. It's just kind of like a lifestyle change now. In the beginning, like I said, if you watch my other videos, it was hard. Um, but now it's kind of, I'm just kind of used to it. So I'm going to start with what I eat for breakfast most mornings because I'm limited with not having the eggs. It's, breakfast is a little tough for me. I feel like it's hard for me to get my protein in. Um, but what I basically do is I have gluten-free oats because oats are one of those that are kind of the question mark if they have wheat in them or not. Um, and it depends, you know, if they're processed in a facility with wheat and all that. So I just make it easier um, and buy gluten-free. I've never been a huge oatmeal fan except for in the winter time. And when I eat them, I always had old fashioned oats. I don't eat instant or any of that garbage with all that stuff in it. Um, anyway, I'm almost finished with this one, so, but I want to show you the bag. Um, let's see how much I have left. And these are just the um, Bob's Red Mill. You've probably seen this brand a lot, like in kind of the health food section of your grocery store. Um, my Publix has a pretty good selection, but amazingly, my Kroger has a really good selection of 
like gluten-free and all natural organic and all that so anyway um this is what the bag looks like and you can see at the top it says gluten-free so you just know then you know that's something you don't have to worry about so i normally have um you know the regular half cup serving size for breakfast in the morning and what i do and by the way this is seven grams of protein it's only one sugar has five grams of fiber which is great um, so what I do is have the serving of that, and I've always done this with my oatmeal, but I always put in a little spoonful of organic coconut oil. Um, I've always had a hard time taking um, fish oil tablets or omega-3 tablets. They always, you know, maybe burp, maybe bloated, all that. So I try to get in my omega-3s any way I can, you know, through food or something like this. So I always put a spoonful of that in there. Um, a ton of cinnamon. I didn't bring it out here, but I've always loved cinnamon in my oatmeal. So ton of cin cinnamon, which is, you know, great antioxidant. And that kind of gives me that flavor. Um, and then recently, thanks girls for mentioning this to me. I've been putting in the chia seeds. And again, this is the same Bob's Red Mill chia seeds. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with chia seeds. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you. I mean, they're like super, super tiny. I'll just show you. But I mean, they're really, really tiny. Basically, they're the same. You get the same benefits as you would flaxseed. I think more people have probably heard of flaxseed than chia seeds. And we used to eat flaxseeds quite a bit. But the thing with those, um, they're bigger. So most of the time, you need to grind them. And they don't last as long. Um, you can put them in the fridge, which I put these in the fridge just to, you know, just in case. But, um, you know, the flaxseed will go rancid faster. So it's almost like nuts, you know, they don't stay around very long but anyway um and this helped keep you full i think a little bit longer because if you've ever seen them in liquid they get like this gel around them and they absorb like 10 times their size in liquid or something um anyway you can google chia seeds you know it'll tell you all about it but like i said i I'd, I'd always heard of these but didn't know really what the difference between this and flaxseed so this is just a great alternative to flaxseed it's easier to eat because you don't have to grind them up or anything so i put like um you know just a spoon i'm going to eat my oatmeal with i just sprinkle probably a spoonful of that in my oatmeal then. And then whatever berries I have on hand, just again for some sweetness, something else in it because I hate plain oatmeal. Um, you know, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, whatever's in season, I usually do like a half cup of those. So that's kind of what I have for breakfast. Sometimes I'll put, um, I'll have like a piece of chicken sausage with it, which I've shown before, or a couple strips of turkey bacon. It really just depends how hungry I am, um, you know, and what, just what I'm wanting to eat that morning. Okay, I had to take a drink and that reminded me. Um, I try to drink three of these full of water a day and that might not seem like a lot to some of you. I am not a big drinker all through the day. I've always been really bad about, I just don't feel like I need a lot to drink. Um, but I've been forcing myself to drink more water and like I said, I try to at least have three of these a day. I start, I try to taper down around dinner because I don't want to be up all night going to the bathroom. But anyway, and sometimes I'll put lemon in it, sometimes not. Okay, um, if I want cereal, because let's be honest, I go on my kicks of cereal where I could see, eat cereal like all three meals because it's just easy to me. I did buy a gluten-free cereal um, just because sometimes it's just more about the texture and the crunch of eating cereal and it's just easy. So I did go ahead and buy this. Um, and it's not bad. I was surprised. And I think why I like it because it has two different textures in it. This is a gluten-free Nature's Path Organic. And this is the Sunrise Crunchy Vanilla. And why I like it, it has flakes, but yet these little round crunchy things. So there's two different textures in there and that's why I like it. So anyway, like I said, this is just, this isn't an all the time because I don't recommend if you're going wheat-free just to replace everything with gluten-free stuff because there's a lot of junk out there and a lot of gluten-free stuff has added sugar in it. So you really gotta be careful. You can't just go, oh, I'm gonna buy brownies and cakes and bread and you know, once you start realizing everything's gluten-free, you know, I don't suggest doing that. <laughs> just cut it out, whatever you were eating before. But this, like I said, is just to have another option since I'm kind of limited with dairy. Okay, let's go for lunch. Lunch, like I said, breakfast and lunch are a little tough for me. It's easier if we have leftovers from the night before because dinner's easy. Because to me, dinner's always kind of like, you know, a carb, protein, and fat anyway. And especially this time of year when we grill a lot, you know, we'll have grilled chicken, pork chops, steak, 
you, those of you who watch my what's for dinner, I mean, you pretty much see how we eat. So if we have leftovers or I'll specifically buy extra now, because it's so much easier to eat cleaner and healthier and wheat free, whatever you're doing, um, when you plan ahead. You've always heard people talk about that. You hear people um, pre-plan their meals for the week and all that, it works. They talk about it for a reason. Um, I've totally noticed the more I pre-plan, it's just easy for me, especially at lunchtime. When I just need to grab something and go, or I don't have a lot of time, you know, I want something easy. So if I have a chicken breast left over from the night before, that's great. I just have salad. Speaking of salad, I forgot to bring it out here, but what I started doing, and this has made life so much easier for us because I don't know about you guys, but we used to buy bag salad and I don't know, just sometimes it's not great or it seems like it doesn't last very long, whatever. But we both really like romaine lettuce. So I thought, you know what, why don't I just start buying the romaine hearts, chop it up, put it in the salad spinner, you know, rinse it off myself. Well, that's what I've been doing. And then I just use a great big bowl. And I mean like a bowl, a huge bowl with a plastic lid and that just sits in the refrigerator. And then we'll use it up every, you know, two, three, four days, um, you know, cause I'll probably have it for lunch. My husband may take some for lunch. We'll have it for dinner. Um, cause we eat a lot of salad, you know, for dinner um, in the summertime. And that's been so easy, just plain lettuce, but it's already washed, cut up in there, grab what I want, stick it on a plate, whether I want to put, you know, grilled vegetables with it for lunch or want to make a salad, you know, a regular salad or grilled chicken, or maybe, you know, I, I would have made like a chicken salad and I want to put that with it. So you get the idea. Um, you know, it's just trying to be a little creative basically. So I didn't want to forget to tell you about the lettuce. So I'm glad I thought of that. So that's basically what I have for lunch. Um, just trying, like today I had, we bought a quinoa salad at Earth Fair. I had made one last week on my own, but I wanted to get an idea of what they put in this one so, you know, I could try that at home. I need to find some new recipes for quinoa. Last week I made basil and lemon. Um, the one I got from Earth Fair is great, so I'm trying that out. And that's what I had for lunch today. I just had that quinoa salad and then I made chicken salad. And that's what I had. I did have a few rice chips today with it just because I want something crunchy. Um, but I'm still trying to like stay away from most carbs. So leading into that now, um, I wanted to show you my favorite rice chips. I've shown these before actually because I ate these even before going wheat free. Um, these are from Costco and I've seen them one other place but now I can't find them. They're the Wild Rice Works, Gourmet Wild Rice Crisp. And this is sea salt and black sesame, and they are wheat and gluten free, all natural, whole grain, brown, and wild rice. So, like I said before, I'm cutting out wheat, but I've not cut out rice or corn. So, that still lets me be able to, you know, have Mexican food, chips, you know, things like that if they're made from rice or corn. And I'm trying to, you know, limit myself on those, but I'm still you know, able to have things like that. So basically, like I said, these are made of brown rice, um, you know, three grams of fiber, two grams of protein, not terribly bad for you, but this is great. So if I want a snack, like I'll have these with hummus, I'll have it with guacamole and it's very filling. I don't need that many of them. Today I wanted them with the chicken salad just cause I'm not having it on a sandwich, you know, with bread. Um, speaking of hummus, I know I could make my own, but sometimes I just can't be bothered. I don't mind making some things, but then other things, it's just easier to pick up. So I just bought some regular hummus this time. I go through quite a bit of these because I will put it on just about everything. I'll have carrot um, chips with it, little carrot slices um, as a snack. I dip little cherry tomatoes in it as a snack, celery, pretty much any veggie you can imagine. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm having with hummus, or like I said, it's great with the rice crackers. Um, another snack that I've always been into is nuts. I like mixed nuts, um, you know, wal walnuts, cashews, um, you know, things like um, almond almonds, actually. Anyway, my husband and I recently have been into this, and I just stuck it in this container. Um, we've been into pistachios. And I've always loved pistachios, but we kind of go through phases with them. Well, we've been buying them like crazy lately. And what's great is because, you know, you have to sit there and crack them open so it slows you down a little bit, but they're actually, you know, um, not very high in fat and they're really good for you and a nut that, you know, I should be eating. So there's certain 
all kinds of food and everything I've looked up basically. Things I should stay away from, things I should eat, you know, if you have like adrenal fatigue, hypothyroid, all those things. Um, like that I said, I'm trying to figure out. So anyway, I'm trying to, like I said, help myself with diet first because that sounds like even a lot of doctors make that suggestion. Even if you have to go on medication, um, they also say, you know, to change your diet because oddly enough, um, it seems like gluten sensitivity and allergies to food go hand in hand with people that are hypothyroid. So if you all of a sudden are having allergy issues with food or just seasonal allergies or having, you know, digestional issues, um, you know, ask your doctor if you can get your thyroid tested. Um, now, depending on where they send your blood work, different labs have different ranges. There's like I said, tons of information out there about that. Um, but you know, you'd be surprised that you may indeed have something wrong like that and that's what's causing all your other issues. So, um, one last thing I just wanted to touch on, like I said, I didn't go into a lot about dinner because most of you see what we eat for dinner um, on the what's for dinner videos. But if I want something sweet, I will just have a little piece of chocolate and I have this in a bag because I keep it in the refrigerator. This is just the Lent um, a touch of sea salt. This is dark chocolate and it just looks like that. And I will just break off a little square. They're about that big and I'll sit there and, you know, eat it while I'm watching TV at night or whatever after dinner. And it's great. Um, it's definitely very satisfying because the dark chocolate, I'm not feeling like, you know, I need to have a big old piece of cake or anything like that. So, um, that's something maybe that you guys might want to try as well. I feel like I've totally been talking a ton. I hope I didn't forget anything. If I did, I'll try to put some notes. Um, in the information bar below. But if you guys have any questions um, about anything I've mentioned or any specifics you wanted to ask me, definitely let me know. Um, you know, leave me a comment. And thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.